Greetings and welcome to the Rock, Rock, Rock and Roll podcast. Check out this record. My name is Mark and with me as always is a man who has the diamond hard look of a cobra. It's Frankie D. You know, it's the chiseled jawline that does it for most people, my friend. It really is. Welcome back to check out this record. You know, we're available on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever it is that you found us. Heck, we're even on uh, the tube of you. That's right. New episodes are going to drip to the drop directly to your ears every Friday. And of course, we like to rip and flick the nipple of what you hold sacred oh. for your listening pleasures. <laughs> I forgot Hello. to put that in there. <laughs> Hello, Daddy. So uh, what is Check Out This Record? Well, uh, when Frank and I aren't ripping and flicking the nipples of things, uh, we find uh, records for each other to, you know, check out. Uh, but that's not all. Oh, nay, nay. We also have a wide array of musical discussions, like in our spotlight series, where we'll dig into a band's catalog and see what come uh, and see what we think of these bands uh, when we come out the other side. <laughs> or in our verse series, we're gonna pit two albums against each other and they duke it out for total stereo domination. That's right. Now, if social media is your Ow. jam, be sure to check this out <laughs> on the Instagram or the Fart Book, uh, where we have a, a group thingamajig so that the musical roasting of sacred cows never has to end. Go ahead and mark yourself safe uh, from shitty music by giving us a like or a follow or whatever it is you do when you're not crying about a girl being able to kill the predator. Wow, I really did write this a long time ago. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Don't forget to fart over, uh, pop over. Jeez, the, the farts, man. They're always yes, in, my, in my mouth mm-hmm. for some reason. <laughs> so the world's oh. famous tube of you. And watch us as we make these, I mean, faces right now. We put the show together. So be sure, you better be sure, to fire off and click that good old subscribe button. Mm-hmm. Now uh, that we've got all of that out of the way, uh, on the podcast today, we're talking about Sonny Vincent's 2021 release, Snake Pit Therapy. Chances are, uh, maybe you haven't heard of Sonny Vincent. And up until recently, um, my nose is itchy. We hadn't either. Frank, you discovered him while doing some research on our recent Rocket from the Crypt episode. In the archives. The archives. Uh, can you take us back to that moment of discovery and how it brought us to where we are now? Two words, my friend. Vintage piss. Yeah. So ah. that's the name of the record of Sonny Vincent collaborating with Rocket from the Crypt. I was just blown away uh, by that record and then went headfirst into Vincent's catalog and found Snake Pit Therapy and was honestly almost ashamed of myself for not knowing about this guy sooner. Shame on me. Shame, shame on us. Uh, However, uh, I do love that feeling of finding uh, something new and just uh, just it's sneaking up on you. And I I really, I enjoyed that about this. So uh, some backstory on Sonny Vincent, Uh, the dude's bio reads like a character from a book that's just like too real to be made up. Uh, I'm going to read uh, some of it because it's, it's uh, poetically ridiculous, if I may coin a phrase, uh, and I feel so compelled to do so. So uh, please, to quote his biography, uh, living illegally at the age of 13 in a girl's dormitory, playing guitar by age 14, Ooh. and in and out of reform school not soon after, Vincent rocked harder before he was 18 than most people do in a lifetime. I mean, come on, man. How fucking cool is that? I mean, by 18, he's had more life experience than I've had at 42. <laughs> so in uh, 1976, 76, Frank, uh, he founded the Testers, a three-piece uh, without a bass player yeah. or cymbals. Uh, the OG Testers lineup had Sonny Vincent singing and playing guitar. Gene, this is a holy shit, I'm not going to say this dude's name right. What an sing Italian a, that sing is. A, <laughs> sing a song a Lalo. Fuck, sorry, dude. Uh, also playing guitar. And uh, probably for my my convenience, uh, Gregory R. playing the drums. Uh, mm-hmm. That's what the internet gave me as his name. So oh, I internet. couldn't ruin it. Uh, since this episode isn't about the testers, we'll move along. Uh, at some point, they got cymbals uh, and a bass player yes. uh, who showed up. And the, the band toured with the likes of uh, Dead Boys, 
uh, and, and became a mainstay at Max's Kansas City and CBGB's, uh, but somehow only released one single, Frank. Uh, they dismissed offers from record labels, again, uh, from their bio, quote, for them, it was about rock and roll, pedal to the metal rock and roll, end quote. Yes. Uh, the band would break up in 1981, and it Aww. wouldn't be until 2003 Yay. when Swami Records would release the band's collective works for the world to hear for the first time off stage. Frank, do you have anything you'd like to add about the testers before I move on? I didn't even notice the lack of bass and cymbals until I read it. And that's another cool record that I just suggest people check out as well. That's the best thing I could tell them about that. Yeah. So in uh, 1980, Sonny was committed to New York State Windale Mental Hospital, uh, but he was soon out and dabbling in filmmaking and multimedia art before leaving for Minnesota. Minneapolis in 1981, where he started another band, uh, Sonny Vincent and the Extreme. They released a film called uh, Mannequin World, which uh, now we just call a music video, but was definitely weird and uh, ahead of its time. In 1984-85, he was uh, involved in a film, excuse me, he was involved with a, a live performance project that saw him banned from the grounds of uh, Minneapolis College of Art and Design. I would have loved to know what happened there. Wouldn't yeah, you? yeah, this is what happens when New Yorkers go to Minneapolis. I just think that's what happens. It probably. <laughs> uh, he'd go on to, to form another band called Model prisoners with uh, Bob Stinton of Frank's beloved The Replacements, uh, but would also uh, just rotate a ton of really cool musicians in and out as he toured U.S. and Europe. He'd go on uh, tour, uh, go on to tour, excuse me, with Maureen, uh, a.k.a. Mo Tucker uh, of the Velvet Underground as her guitarist. He'd record his own material playing with all kinds of cool dudes like Scott Ashton, the original drummer from the Stooges, and Captain Sensible of the Damned. Uh, he's got countless releases and credits to his names, including 2015's Vintage Piss, uh, Frank's Discovery, uh, which brings us back to this moment. Now, Frank, you ready to get off that, <laughs> get on that couch? And I know I'm not doing good with the reading today. Get on the couch, uh, and do a little snake pit therapy. Just call me King Hiss from He Man, my man. All right, there. And no one Hiss. gets that, but <laughs> nope. I mean, He Man had such forgettable villain names. It's it's really terrible. I know, I know. But and this guy was like a legit snake. Yeah. Mm. Track one, stick. Frank, pure uh, chainsaw pop music with uh, that cutting guitar and pounding drums with these otherworldly backing vocals. First track, you sticking around? Yeah, I love the chugging chords and just the, raz the razor sharp to the ears. Such rock and roll energy. And I tell you what, Sonny could wail on that guitar. Absolutely. Track two, Messed Up in Blue. Uh, holy shit, these uh, melodic vocals paired with these uh, desperate and beautiful lyrics, man. Uh, there are so many layers here, the pretty guitar parts and the racing drums with that mantra like repetition of I got to tell you gives me goosebumps. Frank, how about you? This is a beautiful song. Uh, so Dylan gave us Tangled Up in Blue and Vincent gives us Messed Up in Blue. Lots of layers, as you said, and a great melody infused in this song. Track three, The End of Light. Uh, spoiler alert. That's the end of light. Uh, sorry. And just like that, uh, we're back with some of that thunderous sound running through the rain uh, for the station. Another song about running, running from the world, running from the game, running from the chains. Uh, I've seen Christmas Carol enough to imagine he's talking about the ramification of our actions, uh, at least one of those things. Um, really cool track. There is a cool, creepy video uh, for this one, too. Uh, if you should uh, feel so encouraged to check it out, please check it out. Frank, your thoughts? I love this song and how it's centered around the aspect of us running. Uh, so many things we could run from in life. So this song really feels like we're running from the chains while wearing chains. Great tune. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Track four, The Rain is Black Again. Uh, oh. If the first three tracks hadn't convinced you that Sonny uh, was 
really talking to you while, uh, while he's going to therapy. The, the, the rain is black again. We'll cement that for you. Uh, Frank, this song uh, breaks down into kind of two couplets of verses and those really gorgeous, sorrowful choruses. Uh, simple but profound. I'm really kind of at a loss of words uh, for how beautiful this song is. Uh, can you help me out? I wish I could, man, but I, I think I need help myself. Um, this yeah. is such a well-built song that I'm amazed more don't know about this or who, of course, they don't even know who it's by. Uh, just good old two guitars, bass, drums, and, and core cymbals this time. Uh, one of the many highlights for me. Absolutely. Crack five can't absorb uh, speaking of uh too beautiful for words I, i've never felt like someone has understood the numbness uh that can set in on you when you feel kind of lost and broken i i can't say that's where he was when he wrote this but i feel like he knows it well frank can you absorb i don't know if i can but you could tell let me tell you you could, you could tell that this guy lived the hurt you know, uh, like when I sing about things, it's about other people because I'm very, very uninteresting. Just ask Mark. But here it's all Vincent wow. all the time. There you go. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, sorry that you really caught me off guard with that. Uh, <laughs> track six, never tired. Uh, this is a uh, that's not us today. <laughs> of, yeah, this is uh, as pure of a rock and roll ballad as punk rock has ever balladed. Yeah. Uh, the guitar work here is, is nothing short of perfect. The bass line is clean and drives, and the drums never back off. You feel uh, the genuine obsession we call love for someone, despite all of his fears and doubt. I, I love it, Frank. Yeah, I really think this is the best representation of rock's progression to have punk included in its circle. It maintains the rock structure, yet you get the edginess and then the high energy. So it's not overly loaded, too, with distortion, which, again, makes these strings really, they cut you like a razor. Mm. Track seven, higher than Charlie. Dude, uh, from a rock and roll ballad to punk rock poetry, this song rips and leaves you asking, what the fuck is he talking about and why am I so into it? Frank, uh, are you higher than Charlie? Sheen? If that's the case, no. However, <laughs> I'm winning. Remember that whole bit? I'm winning. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Man, this is cryptic as hell, uh, but it's just a kick in the ass uh, in a good rock and roll time way. Absolutely. Track eight, get out. Okay. Uh, could you imagine <laughs> if the Ramones went to college? That's this song. It's got a, a hint of the Stooges in there too. Lyrically, it's deceptively simple while it rocks your face off. Um, I know that that description didn't really do it justice, but Frank? Well, then I'm not going to do it justice, my man, but definitely Stooges and Ramones vibe for sure. Uh, just a New York feel to it as well. And I'm all about that. Mm -hmm. Track nine, Whip Tree. Oh. We've, uh, we've turned the record over and it's time for the B side. Uh, imagine a game where you climb a tree, strip off its branches and turn them into whips and you start whipping each other uh, until you're the only one still in the tree. Kids are fucked up, man. Uh, but it makes for fascinating songs and gives you Plenty to talk to your therapist about. Frank, mm -hmm. have you ever played in a whip tree? I, I haven't, but I promise you my next therapist will be knowing about it. So, I, I mean, this is like messed up. This is like one of those post-apocalyptic movies where the kids need like survival and this is like the means mm -hmm. of it. But, um, you know, it's so messed up that how can one make this up if at least there wasn't some hint of truth to it. So it has to be a little true, right? That these things actually happened. I mean, that's the only way I could explain it. Yeah. Track 10, Japan and Mofo. Uh, Frank, we've got another rock and roll love song here. Uh, we get that tester style pedal to the metal rock and roll with all of the fun stops, uh, which just add up when you, you let that guitar really rip. Uh, Frank, you feeling Japan Mofo? Totally, man. And yes, this does have a testers feel to it. Love the vibe. And of course, I love the song. Nice. Track 11, Radiation Day. 
Mm. Saturday, you told me. Saturday, you told me. And Sunday is the day I died. Frank, there is so much going on here. It's got this uh, roots rock and roll twangy groove uh, to it, but it's this beautiful morbidness too that you can't really help but sing along to. It's, it's nearly hypnotic in a way. Uh, are you going to call and tell me? <laughs> I can call and tell you how badass this album and song is, my friend. Uh, <laughs> we get the twang and the roots all over the place, dark and gritty and more punch in the face than a melancholy tune. Uh, topically, it's it's heavy, but it's sonically a really fun song. <laughs> Absolutely. Track 12, Ruby Diamond. Mm -hmm. uh, this is pretty wild. I'd go as far as to say it's it's my least favorite um, on the album, but that's got more to do with how amazing the rest of the album is than any fault of its own. Uh, I certainly uh, have far less of an idea uh, what's actually being talked about on this song than any of the other tracks, but it's got great energy and it keeps you engaged with the album, uh, certainly this deep on the backside of the record. Uh, it's a pretty fun rock song, Frank. You got mm -hmm. any idea what Ruby Diamond is about? No idea, specifically other than Ruby is a girl he knows or knew, maybe from the streets, maybe from work, maybe from Minneapolis. Who knows? Uh, not my fave either, but the energy is good. So, All right, track 13, Not Alone. Very old school kind of 70s punk groove to open. And we're right into a straight up tune about isolation that the need to remember you're not alone is is really present. It's so simple, but uh, perfectly done. Like a good steak, oh. you got to cook it right. Right, mm. Frank? Dude, just like a good steak, you need to cook it right. And this song cooks simple. And sometimes those simple ones are the hardest songs to write. Mm -hmm. Track 14, Another Land. Oh. Spoiler alert, this is my favorite song on the album. And uh, I have no idea where to begin with it. Uh, Frank, I, I know I'm drawn uh, drawn in by that chorus of uh, I'm no healer, I'm no dealer, uh, but I'll get you high somehow. And of course, when he swaps out dealer for savior on the back half of the song, uh, it really hits hard um, that he's not trying to get someone high. He's trying uh, to lift someone out of their pain. Maybe, right? I'm, I'm not his therapist. Um, what is it about this song that draws you in? Well, it's the infectious melody mixed with the note perfect guitar playing with hints really of desperation. Uh, this is another one where, you know, he lived through what he was talking about. Mm -hmm. Track 15, Forest. Uh, it's the final track, and what one hell of a closer to the album it is. Uh, you're never alone in the forest of broken hearts. This feels to me like the album uh, swelling to its bittersweet end. There is that haunting, beautiful chorus of you're not alone in the forest of broken hearts. Uh, as the song slows and becomes kind of ethereal with a soft uh, harmonies filling the air, the song slows to to, to a dead stop just to swell back up and rock out uh, for one last heartfelt moment where only the guitars, bass, and drums can express the passion that uh, has gone into this record. Uh, am I alone on this, Frank? What a closer indeed, man. Uh, so rich, true, authentic, dark, gloomy, and powerful. Uh, Forrest, the perfect title for this song. Uh, such a final chapter uh, for this album, man. Really cool. No, holy crap, Frank. That puts uh, my ass uh, on the therapy couch. I'll tell you what, <laughs> um, Frank, uh, your final thoughts. And as always, should people check out this record? Absolutely. 1,010. Is that what I put there? 1,010 percent. Yes, they should That's check out wrote, this yeah. record. Yeah. Uh, the fact that we and more people were unfamiliar with Sonny Vincent is just astonishing. Vincent really embodies that rebellious, rebellious early 50s rock and roll traits, uh, did a big hopscotch jump over the psychedelic music and continued with 70s New York punk scene uh, that he, without a doubt, had a hand in. Uh, this is just good punk rock and roll record filled with what makes me love music. You got the guitar right there creating all the hooks and adding great solos. 
Uh, Vincent does a great job of plucking out the melody to go along with these songs, and that makes them memorable. Uh, Mess Up in Blue, End of Light, Right, uh, Rain is Black, I'm sorry, J- um, Japan Mofo, Radiation, Not Alone. Great album. Research the guy. Get invested in his music. Uh, if you are in the South Florida area and want to join a Ramon sci-fi band, please let me know. Um, but with this record, you won't be disappointed. This is a 9 out of 10 for me. <laughs> oh, man. Definitely join Frank in that band. I wish I could. Uh, for me, <laughs> this record uh, is hitting at a pretty interesting point in my life, and I, I've drawn a lot of strength from its uh, positive energy. Not only does this album flat-out rock, it's a rock and roll record uh, with punk roots, that isn't yeah. afraid to embrace them uh, while letting that guitar really rip. All while Sonny manages to put uh, a master class in punk, punk rock poetry on, yeah. placing words and music in a way that anyone who has ever wanted to express themselves through song uh, would find envious. Not to name the whole album, uh, but some of the absolute highest of the highlights are uh, Messed Up in Blue, mm-hmm. The End of Light, The Rain is Black Again, Never tired, radiation day, not alone, another land, and forest. Yeah, totally. As you might have expected just about totally. with the entire album. Uh nine point nine 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 out of ten. It's a it's a damn near perfect record for me. Um I quickly uh went out and uh out of my way and, and found a copy of this and, and just couldn't be happier with how amazing it sounds. And it came with this killer uh not necessarily a book. It came with like a, an insert booklet yeah. uh, with all the lyrics and pictures um, of Mr. Vincent. And they're really well put together. Classy as fuck, Frank. Yeah, it's yeah, classy yeah. as fuck. Oh, and the, there's a smaller book that you can order uh, on the side uh, of Sonny's called Snake Pit Theory, full, full of his writings, both, both autobiographical uh, poetry stuff and some fiction in there as well. Good luck oh. figuring out which is which. Um, <laughs> worth checking out for sure. Frank? <laughs> what should we listen to for next week well i'm i'm kind of i'm gonna connect you to another guy who's similar with the new york punk scene okay not necessarily uh currently kind of doing that music as as he wanted to to, to do a little something different but this person has actually collaborated with with the boss on a song and uh mm-hmm. billy joe from green day and he was in a new york uh, underground punk band back in the day called Degeneration. So the gentleman we're going to be looking at is Jesse Malin. Okay. So M A L I N. And we're going to look at his debut record, which is the fine art of self destruction. Mm-hmm. And I, and I think you're going to dig it. He, he has definitely has the punk roots and he's trying some different, uh, different things here. And obviously since that record, he has a whole slew of others, but this is where it starts. And they're kind of similar figures, black jacket, greasy kind of black hair and uh you know all all in on rock and roll so jesse malin the fine art of self-destruction which is from 2003 that's the album we're gonna check out choice sir i I look forward to i have never heard of this dude's solo work so yeah interested to check it out absolutely man it's the boldest of all choices (laughs) but hey listen thanks for watching listening remember like subscribe rate review be safe out there. Seriously, uh, thank you guys so much uh, for listening to the show. Drop us a line. Give us that good good uh, on what to listen to next. And say uh, say it with me now. Oh, my, my. Oh, hell yes. Oh. Bye-bye. Frank, it's a holiday. What are you doing in there in your room with the door shut by yourself? What's going on in there? What's oh, that man. sound? What are you doing? Frank. Shoot. Yeah. Frank, I know you're in there. She used to do that to me when I lived at home. <laughs> Other people need to use the bathroom, Frank. Oh, yeah, totally. <laughs> oh, yeah. Later, buddy. Wait, wait. Oh, there you go. Stop. Did I stop Scaling it? Wag. <laughs>